Yeah, Kerma Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight. Uh, this is about day five for me. Uh, a couple of little days, I took a couple of bolts out here and there. Anyway, the uh, sun is slowly starting to come up and uh, getting a little bit brighter over there. And oh, there it comes. Anyway, Fantasy of Flight. Installation. Another sitting outside project one day. That'll be a ramp route restaurant one day. Anyway, uh, working on the DC-3. Yesterday we got the left wing off. And I think if we can get the right wing off as well in Washington, uh, we may clean up the mess. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I was I reflected it was eight years ago I went to Washington with my Austin the ostrich campaign and I, anyway oh my god I autographed 500 and I don't know 65 books or something like that and I went around in the halls of Congress and the Senate and I passed one out to everybody I think I mailed like 27 to the executive branch anyway and I got a great little poster I did uh, it says Austin the ostrich, and it says even an ostrich knows it takes two wings to fly. God damn it. I don't think that's what their plan is, but anyway. So here we go. Check that out, man. We got the got rid of the left wing first. <laughs> We're going after the right wing. Uh, today's mainly going to be just taking bolts out um fills back in on thursday and uh anyway so and art's got to leave today at noon and i've got an appointment at 12 30 so we'll just work on getting bolts out at this point and uh go from there let me dump some stuff off in my office and hit it Okay, I got the line hooked up, the airline. I can't find one of my wrenches. Um, Art cleaned the wing off yesterday, and when I grabbed all my tools, Anyway, I don't know what. I'm gonna have to wait till Art shows up. I've got one seven sixteenths wrench, and that's it. Anyway, these are the pieces that had held the landing gear on before. God, this thing is such a mess. Oh my God, that's all tore out. That was part of the landing gear there was i don't know how they hit it but somehow they had something up there what i'm gonna get dave to do is see the landing gear if you see it it's cocked a little bit like this and uh you know when it it goes off center this way of course the ram's not even in there anymore a lot of that stuff was taken out this goes forward and then this thing just hinges up like this so what we're going to do is I'm going to get them to probably take this bolt out, hook something to that bolt, clamp something to here, and that gear is not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> I talked to Frank Moss. Frank Moss is down in, uh, kind of down by Punta Gorda or whatever in Florida. He's a big DC-3 guy. And the hur big hurricane that went through there the other, uh, I don't know, it was a year or so ago, EA B-17 got dinged a little bit. Anyway, he had a DC-3 strapped down there and it was all strapped down on the landing gear because, you know, we found out there's really no place to tie it down on the wings. 
he strapped it down, the hurricane went through, the landing gear was still sitting there and the DC-3 ended up quite a ways away. Just ripped it off the landing gear. Oh my God. So that's all ripped out. Yeah, the there was three prop things on there and when it fell down, the two bottom ones ended up, uh, you know, jacking up the thing. On that one, it didn't do it, but it basically this cowling broke. You see, it's hanging down there. It got dinged up. I mean, just corrosion, you know. Oh my God. Corrosion there. This wheel well is a disaster. I mean, just look at all that. It's just, I mean, there's no way this thing would ever fly again, but even as a static, it's questionable. Um, you know, these all bolts, but see, this is all blown out. Look at all that. That's just all, all the, all the, uh, Extrusions are blown out. Just pieces blown out in the back there. Um, the fuselage is not too bad. Like I said, I've got a potential use for it, for the fuselage. And nobody cares about the wings because it's not going to fly. I mean, just look at all this. I mean, that's all superficial. God, none of us can remember. Of course, this was all hooked on there. I don't remember when I bought this thing for $6,000. There was no engines and props. But I don't remember who did all this and how we put it together. And who, I think, I remember we painted it, I think. And Rick came up with the idea. All that mold and stuff. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. All the uh, the rudder hinges had deteriorated and during one of the hurricanes that uh, tore the rudder off. God almighty. Anyway. Yes, yeah, so this is a DC-3. This got the air stair door. I've had a couple of people showing interest in the air stair door. If I do something with it, we're going to put in a C-47 door, but apparently those doors are hard to come by. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is the only thing that was hanging. Oh my God, look at that. There's nothing left. Look at that. There's nothing left to even hook to. Oh my God. Oh my God. Man, that'd be a big piece to make. Unreal. That's still in not too bad shape. Anyway. Um, well, I can't do anything until I find a wrench. That's it. Where did I, where'd my other one go? They're all different. They're kind of like I'm flashing back to my dating days. <laughs> oh my god. These bolts are like girls. Every one of them is different. <laughs> god dang. I only went my uh, my dad didn't have a father when he grew up and my oil geologist grandfather sent my father to English boarding school and my father did not have a good experience anyway so 
he never grew up with a father. He never saw his parents together. And consequently, when I grew up, I, uh, I never saw my parents affectionate, you know, in front of us, you know. And my dad worked and everything. And, you know, the, I never heard, I never heard him argue. Um, but uh, anyway, so when I got into high school and got, got you know, possibly, I was building my airplane and I was uh, on the gymnastic team. And, uh, you know, I just, the whole dating thing just kind of felt uncomfortable to me because I just, I never had a role model, so I didn't know what to do around girls. I mean, I had girlfriends, but I never had a girlfriend. Anyway, so I only went out like one time in high school. So I gravitated toward things I was good at, which was gymnastics and building my first airplane. And uh, anyway, you know, I mean, I had relationships with girls, little short-term flings and things like that. But then eventually I had that long-term relationship, um, like 17 years, but we never got married. And, uh, oh my God, after the hurricane, 92, the energies just felt right. And I left the relationship. And for about five or six years there, man, I went out and I dated and I played the field. Man, I tell you what, I was having so much fun. There was no way in hell I was going to get married. And, uh, but it was interesting. You know, I learned so much about women. I always respected them. And, you know, I mean, I had my little flings with a number of them. And, uh, but there were a lot of times, you know, that, that wasn't the goal. And I just enjoyed being around them and really learning about women. Man, girls are so different. They're from one extreme to the other. Guys tend to be more kind of on one side of the equation, and the girls are all over. Oh my God, it was fascinating learning about them and the differences. But then eventually, there was, like I said, there was no way in hell I was going to get married. I was having too much fun. But what I learned was, you don't choose love. <laughs> love chooses you. And I eventually met Teresa, and we're like, twin flames split apart and um, you know that was it uh, we started dating long distance and uh, she lived in Atlanta fantasy flight had been up for a couple of years and uh, anyway I got started getting serious kind of called the herd there a little bit <laughs> and uh, eventually I invited her to move in with me oh my god and then my life just freaking went crazy from there she moved in three months after she moved in I was coming back I was doing an exhibition with stuff from the Central Armed Forces Museum in Moscow and we had everything out of uh, the museum that the Russians had at the end of World War II we had stuff from uh, Stalin's coat, Stalin's hat, Stalin's pistol. We had everything out of Hitler's bunker. Uh, the battle uh, uh, plan for Berlin. We had the eagle that they blew up and fell off the Reichstag. Um, Hitler's banner. Oh my God, it was amazing. Anyway, so I came back from Moscow. Teresa had been living with me for three months. So I was like jet lagged out. I'd just come back from Moscow. Teresa was sleeping pretty good. And all of a sudden she started making like noises in her sleep. And I'm like, what's going on here? At least now I had some entertainment. So I, uh, so I sit there and I observe this for a while, you know, and she was like, having, like she's having a dream or something. And so after a couple of minutes went by, all of a sudden this like voice comes into my head, not, audibly but psychically and uh, said mimic her so she'd make a noise and I'd make a noise then she'd make a noise and I'd make a noise so this went on for a couple of minutes and I'm sitting there thinking to myself what's going on here then the, this voice comes back and says now you mimic her okay so I made a noise and she's made the same noise she was dead asleep so I'm like, what is going on here? So I started getting close to her and I started like, you know, like, is there any way I could get a conversation going? And so I, uh, 
basically, you know, whispered and trying to keep it down and just, hey, what's up? What do you see? Blah, blah, blah. And after a while, I don't remember exactly what happened the first night, but the second night it happened again. And by the third night, I had a recorder, a tape recorder, a cassette recorder. She trance channeled for three and a half years. I'm talking to spirit guides, angels, non-human life forms. We're going over past lives. I'm like, oh my God, it was freaking, it was unbelievable. Anyway, my life never been the same since, you know. And anyway, so Teresa and I are back. Got a fabulous mission that's unfolding that basically includes fantasy of flight, which in the long run is not really about airplanes. It's going to have some airplanes, but it's more about flight of the human spirit. So sit back and watch it unfold. Um, Anyway, when my life continued to unfold, I'm not going to get into that at this point, but it's even got more and more bizarre. So just hang in there. If it looks like you can't figure out what Kermit's doing, trust me, there's a plan. Oh my God, there is no way I'm going to get that one out. I'm going to have to buy that one some roses. <laughs> oh my gosh. Good girl. This is what I call a shotgun approach. <laughs> if you fire into a flock of them, you're bound to get one or two. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> for so long. Oh my God. Oh, I am so dirty. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, so Art has gotten every freaking bolt out of the bottom. Did a great freaking job. Oh my God. And uh, anyway, I didn't want to go any more on the top until we support this here. I didn't want anybody underneath there. So there's still a pretty good amount of things up here. I got everything after the spar, which is right there. Everything after the spar, I've got, you know, probably a half a dozen nuts forward of the kind of the middle part there and then I've got all those bolts there so anyway I can knock those out tomorrow Art and I both have got appointments today and uh, you know we'll be ready for tomorrow oh my god it's nice getting done before the heat kicks up that's it for today and all we've got we just got those upper ones there all right, cool art. We'll see you tomorrow. Yep, see you tomorrow.
Yeah. Okay, Kermit Weeks, Fantasy of Flight. Uh, heading into work today, a little bit later. Uh, we got the sun just kind of coming up over here. A little bit of a later day for the crew. Anyway, it's been fun being part of the <laughs> aircraft department. Anyway, um, so today we're going to be able to get the, the last wing off. And uh, then at some point I think I'm going to want to maybe get out a little bit of a wash and pressure washer kind of a thing or something. See if we can clean some of the mold off the airplane. It looks so bad. Anyway, um, we will see how we do today. I couldn't believe yesterday that we ended up that bottom extrusion on the left side is totally, I <laughs> just fell off. Anyway, so a couple days ago we got the left wing, we took care of the left wing. Now we're going to work on the right wing rhinos and we're going to turn Washington DC into something that uh, people can accept. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Alright, Ken's already out there, so cool. Anyway, we got the plan figured out, so... Here we go. Everybody's kind of getting ready. Getting that out of there. Now uh, getting the forklift set up. The, that wing there. I don't think we're going to need to have the the boom lift on the back trailing edge like we did the other time because we know it's going to hold. So anyway, getting all that strapped and ready to rock. Uh, let me grab my, let me get up here and All right, check this out. This is what I'm dealing with here. I can't even get the wrench on the back side here because of all this exfoliation of the extrusion.
bolts, that's it. Ken's got about two and a half inches up here. I would just, if it's shifted all the way to the right, just hang a hard right turn and see what happens. And maybe, uh, hey Ken, why don't you pull the stand this way when he when he does that? You get on the forklift, I would come back and make a hard right turn and that way because you're you, this is at an angle right here now. I can side it, shift. Yeah, if what well yeah, but if you side shift the problem is it's just gonna tighten up the well you try it. Try it. I just want to get a little bit more space. I got plenty in the back here. There we go. There we go. Yeah, just go ahead and back up. Cool. Okay. I'd say that's good. So now, Art, if we could just pop this right here, or cool. There we go. I got it. Okay, so uh, I think we're cool, guys. So let's go ahead. We'll swap on the forklifts, and then I'll uh, go ahead and have to put the lull back on and then disconnect the, the stand.
You want to adjust your your thing. Is your tire where you want it? Yeah. All right, all right, here we go. Yeah, so that's right. So we got to get, we got to get the little forklift, and we got to lift the tip up so we can get this thing out of here. Yeah, we got to lift the tip up, get the lull out of there. I don't roll that off in the middle. Talk about made for the job. Cool. I'm gonna get some. Uh, yeah, it's got a little washing deal there. I gotta come out with a pressure washer or something that's like a softer pressure washer and see if we can clean off some of this mildew. Keep it from corroding. <laughs> All right. I appreciate the help from Art and Ken. Without them, we couldn't have done it. This is 2024, June. 
This is an election year. I just want to point this out. And I just want to say at Fantasy Flight, we're doing everything we can to make this a, a, a great country. And uh, so we uh, thought we, it would be appropriate. We started with the left wing. We got rid of that. Then we got rid of the right wing. And uh, I think if uh, we start to see some progress next year, you can thank Fantasy of Flight for helping clean up Washington, D.C.